Archaeology is the practice of taking things from the past and looking at them with the eyes of the present. It's about trying to understand the people who came long before us, including the things they believed and the practices they followed. In simple terms, archaeology is a quest for knowledge, and there's plenty of knowledge waiting for us all in this video. There's a paleo-Christian necropolis in Autun, France that's been giving up fascinating goods for several months now. In July 2022, it gave up its latest treasures when fragments of purple and gold fabric dating back to the 4th century were found within the necropolis. The gold in the fabric is literally gold thread. Experts have spent the past few weeks cleaning the delicate fabrics and have now learned new details about the weave and materials it's made from. The textiles came from Tomb 47 within the enormous necropolis and were surprising discoveries found within large clods of earth. The cleaning process has revealed floral and herringbone weaving patterns within the fabric, displaying a surprising level of complexity for the era. Rather than being garments that were worn by the people buried in the necropolis while they were alive, experts think it's likely that they were made specifically for burial. That begs the question of why the deceased weren't dressed in them when they were buried, which is a question nobody's been able to come up with a good answer for yet. Making the garments required a high level of technical mastery, so it seems odd that someone would choose to leave them on the ground. Our next discovery was made accidentally, but that doesn't make it any less impressive. Construction workers have been replacing gas pipes in Montorio, not far from Verona in Italy. In the process of doing so, they've come across a beautiful segment of ancient Roman mosaic floor. Professional archaeologists and historians arrived at the site after the discovery was reported in April 2022, and they believe that the mosaic was part of the floor of a 5th century villa belonging to the Ostrogoth king Theodoric the Great. There's no direct physical evidence to link the mosaic to the king, but it could only have belonged to someone of enormous wealth and power. If it wasn't Theodoric, it must have been someone who was very close to him. The king never quite rose to the status of Roman emperor, but he became king of the Ostrogoths in the year 475, king of Italy in 493, and king of Visogoths in 511 remaining on all three thrones until he passed away in 526. Such was his power that historians recognize him as a Western Roman emperor in all but name. We're all familiar with the world-famous archaeological site of Pompeii in Italy, but archaeologists say they found the Chinese equivalent of Pompeii in Qinghai province in late 2015. The discovery is the site of a disaster that occurred 4,000 years ago during the Bronze Age, long before the eruption of Mount Vesuvius doomed Pompeii. Based on the evidence at the scene, it seems that the settlement was destroyed after an earthquake caused the nearby Yellow River to flood, burying everything under a mud tide. The mud preserved everything perfectly, including the heartbreaking skeletal remains of a mother cradling her child in her arms. Similar huddled skeletons have been found elsewhere at the site, suggesting that the disaster arrived quickly and left people with no chance of escape. The site's now known as Lajia and is the biggest disaster excavation area in China. Many of the skeletons have been removed from Lajia and are now on display at the Lajia Ruins Museum in Qinghai Province. Some historians were angry with the removal of the remains, feeling that they should have been left where they fell thousands of years ago. Nobody truly relishes the prospect of digging through a cemetery for children, but they can nevertheless be priceless resources for archaeologists studying the past. What's thought to be a medieval-era children's cemetery was found in southern Turkey in June 2022. It's next to a fisherman's shelter in the region of Aydincik and was found during ongoing restoration works on the Mersin Antalya Highway. Experts in Turkey say that the cemetery served the ancient city of Kalenderis, which was founded 2,800 years ago. Obviously, the cemetery is much more recent than that. All of the skeletons within the cemetery are those of children, many of whom were buried with grave gifts like solid gold bracelets, glass beads, and other trinkets. 
Tests have indicated that the cemetery was first used approximately 1,300 years ago. It's unusual for archaeologists to see a grave reserved exclusively for children, and it's not yet clear why the children were separated from the rest of the burials in Calendaris in this manner. A furnace for the production of roof tiles has been found in the same location, but it's thought that this was built on the grounds of the cemetery at a later date, possibly by people who had no idea the cemetery was there. It took the use of modern ground-penetrating radar technology to uncover the location of a previously unknown Roman city underground at Faleri Novi in Italy. And the scientists who used it believed that they might have found new evidence of the religious customs of the people who lived on the land before the Romans. Aside from the usual bathhouses, theaters, and temples, the team from the University of Cambridge in England also found what appears to be a public monument of a type inconsistent with anything seen in Italy before. And their best guess is that it was a place of worship. The settlement at Falari Novi is thought to have been founded around 240 BCE and lasted around 900 years, but the bulk of it is now deep underground. The buildings show evidence of waterways that were built directly beneath houses, but the strange 180-square-foot monument, which contains niches that may have housed fountains or statues, might have been a place of spiritual significance for the people who lived here before the forces from Rome conquered the land. Whiskey lovers, take note! The oldest whiskey distillery in the world might have been discovered at the site of a Scottish abbey in November 2018. The precise site of the discovery is Lindoris Abbey in Fife where experts have identified a structure consistent with the design of medieval kilns. Residues within the kiln include oats, wheat, barley, charcoal, and pottery. In short, all the things you'd need to distill whiskey. Historical records tell us the abbey was founded in 1191 by the Earl of Huntingdon, who was gifted the land it's built on by his brother, King William I of Scotland. William Wallace, who was played by Mel Gibson in the movie Braveheart, took refuge in the Abbey after the Battle of Black Urnside in 1298. The whiskey distillery isn't thought to be quite that old, but might date back to 1494. That's when the oldest written record of Scottish whiskey distillation tells us that King James IV of Scotland ordered his personal supply from the Abbey. The written records have been known of for a long time, but until November 2018, Archaeologists couldn't find the distillery, no matter how hard they tried. Our next discovery takes us from Scotland to England, where a long-forgotten sculpture was discovered inside St. Wilfred's Church in Barrow-upon-Trent in December 2020. Historians in the country said that the effigy, which they believe to be around 650 years old, is of national significance. It appears to be a representation of a priest, but nobody knows if it's supposed to resemble a real priest or whether it's a symbolic representation of the priesthood. If it's the latter, it might be a tribute to the priests who died in the area during the Black Death. The sculpture has evaded detection for this long because it was hidden behind an organ, so it was only found when the organ was removed for repair and renovation during an 800,000-pound refit of the church. There are some unusual details about the sculpture, including angels cradling the priest's head and a dog at his feet. It might have been hidden behind the pipe organ deliberately because it had suffered extensive damage, but was thought to be too important to be destroyed or otherwise disposed of. If it's supposed to be a real priest, it might be Priest John de Belton, who died in 1350. It's one of the oldest alabaster effigies ever found in the country. We still have much to learn about Saudi Arabian history, but there's a new focus on archaeology in the country that may yield much information in the near future. As an example, here's an 8,000-year-old temple that was found in July 2022. The temple is surrounded on all sides by enormous burial grounds containing precisely 2,807 tombs. Archaeologists found the temple during ongoing excavations at a well-established site called Al-Fani, which is just outside the capital city of Riyadh. Understandably, there isn't much of the temple left to look at after 8,000 years, but it's possible to identify the remains of its altar, among other features. 
The creation of the temple would have been a long and difficult process as it was carved directly into the rocky face of Mount Tawai. The city that surrounds it is even more impressive with towers in each corner and a complicated water system made from ditches, canals, and reservoirs. It's been 40 years since Alfani was first discovered, but if something this size of this temple had gone undetected for this long, it makes us wonder what else might still be there waiting to be unearthed. We're well aware that our ancient ancestors loved to make mosaics, but they didn't make many as big as the one that was found in Alanya, Turkey in July 2022. It's a representation of Heracles, also known as Hercules in Greek mythology, and it covers an area of almost exactly 500 square feet. The discovery was made during planned archaeological excavations in the ancient city of Siedra and formed the floor of the city's communal Roman bath. Rather than being one enormous image, the mosaic contains depictions of Heracles performing his legendary 12 labors. Based on the evidence at the site, experts are reasonably sure that the mosaic was completed at some point during the 2nd century. There are countless depictions of the labors of Hercules in both ancient Greek and ancient Roman art, but this is the first time that such representations have been rendered in life-size proportions. Excavating and removing the mosaic would be a difficult and dangerous process, so for now, archaeologists have covered it back up with soil for its own protection while they consider their next steps. It might end up in a museum eventually, but it would have to be an enormous museum. You have to go a long way to find the Dabu giraffes. They're miles from anywhere in the country of Niger, in a part of the Sahara known as the Tenera Desert. The land here is so barren that its name even translates to the place where there is nothing. There are no animals, no insects, no water, and no life. But there is a collection of 800 petroglyphs, among which the stars of the show are two gigantic carvings of giraffes. They were first identified by an explorer named Christian Dupuy in 1987, but they were carved somewhere between six and 8,000 years ago on sandstone rock. The arid conditions in the desert have preserved them for all this time. The size of the carvings is remarkable. One of them, believed to be a male giraffe, is 18 feet tall. That makes it the largest petroglyph in the world and also the world's largest animal rock carving. The real puzzle of the carvings is that each of the figures is accompanied by a depiction of a human, seemingly holding the giraffes on long leads. Could this mean that thousands of years ago, the human race managed to domesticate giraffes? If so, why did we ever let them go? The art of building bridges was an important skill for humans to learn as their territory spread and rivers got in the way. Most people would probably assume that it began with the Romans, the Egyptians, or the Greeks. But it actually appears to have started around 5,000 years ago in the ancient Sumerian city of Girsu, which is now part of Iraq. The waterway it crossed has long since dried up and gone away, which initially made the remains of the bridge difficult to identify. When they were first discovered during the 1920s, it was generally thought that they were either the remains of an ancient dam or the foundations of a larger building, like a temple. It wasn't until a 21st century exploration unearthed clay tablets in the surrounding area upon which references were made to the existence of a bridge nearby. Archaeologists have now concluded that this structure is the bridge they speak of. It's made out of baked bricks and appears to have been made one brick at a time in a process that might have taken years. As the site was previously considered to be unimportant, it's been left unprotected and exposed to the elements for decades. So the race is now on to preserve it in a manner befitting the world's oldest bridge. The Sutton Hoo helmet is one of the most iconic ancient artifacts ever discovered in the British Isles. If you grew up in Britain, you probably saw pictures of it on the covers of the books you studied during history class at school. Described by experts as the most important Anglo-Saxon discovery of all time, the helmet was found buried in the tomb of a warrior chieftain in 1939, along with all the warrior's weapons and his 110-foot-long boat. It's obvious that this warrior was a mighty and respected leader, 
but sadly his name has been lost to the mists of time. It's often said that both the tomb and the headgear might have belonged to the legendary King Raidwald of East Anglia, but that can't be conclusively proven. The discovery of this helmet changed everything that British historians and archaeologists believed about the Anglo-Saxon culture of 1400 years ago. Until the Sutton Hoo Horde was found, historians considered this period of history to be the Dark Ages, with the people of the British Isles little more than unsophisticated tribal savages. The level of sophistication that went into the design of this famous artifact proves otherwise. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.